Whoa, there is massive inflation after all. Look at this price chart. 48.53% increase over just so far this year. An increase almost 50%. That's inflationary. And what? And lean hog by the pound. So hogs by the pound is going up by 50% so far this year. So my goodness, man, that is massive inflation. Massive inflation. Um, let's go for the whole year for one. Look at that 74% increase in hog price per pound. That's inflation. That's inflation. Then we go to three years. And oh, okay. Huh, interesting. That doesn't look quite as bad, does it? Then we go to five years. Oh, interesting. Seems like there's a, a pattern here. Then we go to max. Oh, eh, yeah. Okay. So seems like it goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. Now from the bottom right here to here, a uh, significant jump, but uh, from right here to there, significant jump too. Hmm. It kind of changes things, doesn't it? So if we're talking mass inflation, my friends, this is where the, the fun with numbers. I mean, look at that. Whoa, Josh, look at that. That's crazy. That's, uh, uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Like, do I sound like Homer? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? That's inflation. That's the feds. Then we say, but yeah, but let's just hang tight for just a second here. Not sure what happened in 2004, uh, yeah, August of 2014, September. Oh, what is that? Sub, uh, July 2014. Yeah, I don't know what caused that. But uh, be it as it may, um, cat, live cattle futures. Let's click on this. My man Jeff had sent this to me. He actually butchered some of his own hogs. And I'm going to share with you a place where you can learn to do this yourself. Or at least you can learn about it. Uh, do they show us the live... Uh, well, they don't, they don't show us cattle futures turn higher, hogs uh, inch upward. Do they show us a chart on that? I guess not. That chart's pretty cool. Business inside, market inside. I wasn't... Uh, I didn't know you could get, I think that's pretty cool. So where's the kind of futures? Live pigs are usually six months old and ready for slaughter. There are clear cycles on the pig market since, unlike the market for live cattle, farmers are barely able to react to price fluctuations since the slaughter of pigs are ready for slaughter can neither be sped up nor slowed down. Um, in fact, my man was telling me, I read his email he sent to me, uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, he said, well, he thought he had heard Tyson's was shutting down due to COVID. He bought a bunch of uh, hogs. He says uh, a lot of hog farmers are getting backed up. Um, his uh, his better half was talking with a friend uh, who is uh, friends with a hog farmer. Uh, we convinced them to sell to us instead of shooting and burying the carcasses. So I'm not sure what, I don't know how that works. Because I guess the uh, the butch, the meat markets were getting backed up. So they, you know, they got these live hogs. They got to offload, I guess. I don't know. So they had people lined up with pickups and trailers. We took four. They sold off a 1,500 head at 50 bucks each. Each hog was about 300 pounds live weight. Current price is right there. We just showed you. So this guy got four hogs at at uh, three uh, four hogs at at uh, for 200 200 bucks total for four hogs. And each hog right now is going for about 300 bucks. That's a pretty significant discount, man. Of course, he didn't know how to butcher them. Um, so we got four for less than a single hog today. We couldn't find a meat locker to do the processing. Oops. We couldn't find a meat locker to do the processing. They were booked out a year at that time. That's why I reacted to your video because meat lockers are still quite busy. I don't know what a meat locker is. So I guess it's a place where they cut them up and butcher them, I suppose. I had to wait over six months for the processing on half a, a half a beef, half a cow. Uh, he says, yes, that's, uh, I got very full freezers right now, right on, man. I think many farmers are stocking up for food inflation shortages, hence private lockers are booked. Uh, this guy says, I'm not a farmer. I grew up on a farm, recently left the city to go back to the rural area. All right, I'm just going to share with you. So Backwoods Home Magazine sent me this, well, not me, but I'm on their email list. From choosing a pig to butchering uh, and using the meat, here are a few articles to get you started on a pig raising adventure. I'll put a link in the show notes, which is pretty good. Uh, hog butchering, using everything but the squeal, uh, buckyard bacon, Ooh, buckboard, oh man, cracklings, an irresistible snack, you can't stop snacking, or sneaking, oh, cracklings are crispy, tasty tidbits of pork that are left over from the lard making process, since my grandmother, uh, parents were very self-sufficient, put up most of their own provisions, homemade lard was an important staple for our household. 
as grandma never had any options of cooking with expensive store-bought butter or fancy vegetable oils. Yeah, man, so, but what's up? Oh, man, bacon. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, heavenly. Buckyard bacon. Oh, man. Last year, our family processed a hog for the first time. This is Tanya Kelly. We made roast pork chops, bacon, Tanya sausages, breakfast link. Oh, now, I know there's going to be a case for a lot of people, but we aren't big on ham around here. We'll eat sliced deli ham on sandwiches, but I sure didn't want to cook a whole ham for making it to sandwich meat. When butchering time rolled around this fall, I intended on making all the hams into fresh roast instead of curling and smoking them. Anyway, I'll put all this link in the show notes. But look at that. Uh, the, the point being is that if inflation does come around, and, you know, my goodness, I mean, for food, there's always inflation because there's always a demand for it. And there's, there will be production limits uh, inherently. Now, that doesn't mean there will be forever inflation, but there's always going to be production limits, man. You know, just, I mean, uh, you, uh, look at what's going on Suez Canal right now. now. I don't know if that has anything to do with, ho- you know, butchering hogs, but at the end of the day, there's only so much people to do the stuff. It's inherently creates scarcity. Scarcity leads to inflation. Uh, so butchering hogs, for instance, chickens, all that stuff. I mean, like this guy was sitting right here, man. Uh, many farmers are stocking up for food inflation shortages, knowing full well that they might not be able to find uh, people to cut them up for them. So maybe that's something you can learn. I'm just telling you. That's something I'm thinking about for sure. So anyway, think about that. All right, we'll see you.